welcome to Mystery Beers episode number 242 of... Brutal Battle. Yes, we're our second Mystery Beer in a long time, and we are hitting the ground running. we cu- coming off a really good one, last one, topic-wise and beer-wise, because, man, the Kolsch and the, that hazy IPA, real solid. Yeah, definitely real tasty, solid. very tasty. So, uh, hopefully we have some other really awesome ones in this one, and I will tease it for you, Rebecca. One of these beers, we've had beers from them before, and one of them, we've never had beers from them before, just like in the last one. Okay, that doesn't really help me at all. Well, I know, but it's interesting. It's it's an interesting (laughs) fact. Fun fact. Yes, exactly. So, uh, what is our topic for this episode? Uh, Uber acquires Drizzly. Now, if there are people out there who are like, what the hell is Drizzly? Yeah, because stupid name. There may even be people who are like, what the hell is Uber? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully people know what Uber is nowadays. Um, yeah, if you don't know what Uber is, get on the internet. Yeah. And if you need to know that, then I also should probably let you know, internet is not dial-up anymore. Just know that. Uh, so, yeah. So, I didn't know about this until I read this article. This was through Good Beer Hunting as well, like the article we had for the last one. And Uber apparently is purchasing Drizzly. It hasn't happened yet, but it should be being, you know, put to bed within the next few months. And they're purchasing Drizzly for $1.1 billion in cash and stocks. Billion? $1.1 billion. With a B. With a B. In cash and stocks. And for people who do not know, Drizzly is... A situation where you can purchase alcohol online. It's not just for beer. It's for wine, spirits, all that stuff. You can purchase alcohol online, and they will have someone bring it to your house. Now, the way it currently works, it is coordinated with the specific stores, like liquor stores and beer stores and spirit stores, whatever, that sign up with Drizzly. And so they're basically just the platform for the orders to come in. And they are providing the people who deliver. Now, obviously, with the acquisition that Uber's making of Drizzly, it would change where the people delivering would actually be drivers for Uber, Uber. as opposed to the staff who work at these liquor stores, beer stores, whatever. So that's a plus, first off, for the stores, because they don't have to have someone they employ running out all over the place. So that's better for them. Um, Really, it would just be a cost saver. For them overall, unless it becomes way more expensive to be associated with it after Uber buys it, which Ouch. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if that is the case. Um, who knows? But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. The, I mean, I do feel like there are a lot of things in this. Like, at the surface, this seems like a really kind of boring whatever story or article. But when you get a little deeper, there are aspects of it that, you know, good, bad, you know, it's worth digging into, in my opinion. So, um, Drizzly's service, once again, I'm just going through like some notes that I took from the article. So Drizzly's service is going to integrate into Uber Eats and also be standalone. So you don't have to use Uber Eats in order to use Drizzly. You will still be able to use the standalone Drizzly app or site. Okay. So it will stand on its own still, but it will also be within Uber Eats. So I assume it will also be a situation where you can get some food and some alcohol at the same time. That'd be sweet. I know a lot of people hearing that right now are thinking, I've had many a times where I got, you know, DoorDash or Uber Eats or whatever and thought, man, it'd be really convenient if they could also bring me booze right now. Yeah. Speaking of booze, I keep wanting to, like, reach for the glasses on the (laughs) table. I'm not... Here, I have water over here. You can reach for that. No, That's it's fine. not the same. <laughs> we'll get there. And I'm like, just, don't drink them yet. Just hold, hold, hold your Gotta horses. listen to this drizzly business. Yeah. Get, the dri- get your drizz on. So it is interesting to point out, though, that there is a company that Uber owns called Lantern. I'm sorry, not Uber. That Drizzly owns called Lantern, which is a cannabis delivery right. company. I read, right. I remember reading that. Now, that will remain separate. Right. And it will continue to have Drizzly founders as um, investors and board members. So the Drizzly folks will still have financial interest in Lantern and some control of Lantern, but Uber will not. 
So they still won't have anything to do with the cannabis business. I assume that's because Uber doesn't want to touch that yet. Yeah. Um, a little Makes controversial, sense. not federally legal, only in certain states. So, yeah. Uh I, I don't I don't fault them for try, for no, trying to stay away that from makes sense. Yeah, that potential illegal trouble. So just breaking down some stats for you, Uber Eats is in all 50 states and about 6,000 cities globally. It's a lot. Yeah. Drizzly is currently in about 1,400 U.S. cities, over 27 states, and Alberta, Canada as well, but also offers two to three day shipping to 15 states where they don't have local delivery available. What's it like around here? We can't use them at all. Oh, really? That's what it's like right here. So I don't know if that means for us that we'll be able to use them now or if there's something state law-wise that will keep us from still getting that. And that's another aspect of this, I think, is that they Uber might not be able to use Drizzly with their Uber Eats in every state because of state laws Mm. as far as delivery of alcohol. Now, from what I was reading in the article, they verify people's age. I read that too, and I thought, how how exactly do you verify someone's age? So I... Without checking an ID. I can't sign up for Drizzly, so I don't know for sure because we don't have it in our area. I'd looked into this some time Uh ago. So I don't know for sure, but I would think there is the possibility that they make you take a picture of your license in order to have an account. Oh. And then that way they can verify that you are of age. Okay. So I don't know if that's the case once again, but I'm I'm theorizing that that's something that can be done. Um, we have the technologies there. It yeah. can happen. What I'm more interested in is just having the stuff shipped. That's fine to me. Um We don't even have that, which I think is dumb, but, you know, we might get there. I mean, all of a sudden we have uh, breweries within Maryland popping up and saying, hey, we can ship within Maryland now. And I'm like, I don't understand how that's possible, but I'm glad that's good. I've always wanted us to get to a point where breweries can sell direct to consumers without having to go through the liquor stores and can just ship to their house. I love that. I want to see more breweries doing that. Keep the money in their pockets. I I don't really see much of a need for beer to go to liquor stores, but Rebecca's still like going back and forth with her hands. She really wants to grab these beers. We'll see. Okay, so and I was under specific <laughs> instructions not to smell them. Yes. So one of the things in the article that was laid out is that this is basically uh, they're insinuating that they believe that it's really going to change ha- uh, the demographics or the, uh, the the purchasing of how people purchase alcohol going forward, um, that they think there's going to be a large shift into e-purchases as opposed to in-person purchases. Now, that said, beer has only been 20% of Drizzly sales from between 2019 and 2020, which is pretty low, even yeah. though I think you were saying that you pulled out of the article that Beer is the most consumed alcohol. alcoholic beverage, right? Yeah. And another thing, the article was saying that by this by this acquisition happening, they think that the biggest bump most likely will come for the big guys like AB InBev, Miller Coors, those folks, because typically with Drizzly, it's those types of beers that are being purchased when it's beer. So I don't know if there's going to need to be some additional effort that goes into getting the craft beers pushed by Drizzly or not. Cause I think that's another thing is that those larger beer companies are paying for like preferred advertising basically Mm, with with Drizzly Drizzly. to say here, if you know, you recommend stuff to people just kind of say, Hey, did you know that if you, if you want to buy this, there's, you know, Bush light, you'd love to, you know, barf this beer up. Barf the spear. No, it's disgusting to me, but anyway. Uh, and then the the last note I had was, right now the store staff... Oh, yeah, I already talked about that, that the store staff makes the deliveries, but that would switch to the Uber drivers, so... Yeah. So, okay, so overall thoughts on this. Good, bad, indifferent, I mean... I mean, it's indi- I'm indifferent because it's a it? service we didn't really use before, so I can't say it's going to be positive or negative because I don't... But say it's available now. Right now. Say, okay, how about this? 
say it's available right now and you can see everything that's available at our local liquor stores and do mix six packs online and it'll be delivered to your door. Yeah, of course I'm down. Right. That that yeah, that's the situation. Now, obviously I'm theorizing that at some point that either they do or would have the ability to do mix six packs. I think they should do that, but um we'll see. But I think it I think I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it's definitely a good thing. Obviously, it's a good thing because of the COVID situation right now. I mean, eventually that will not be a thing. Hopefully, eventually that will not be but a I th- thing. I think people are still going to want a lot of these delivery services even after the pandemic. I think people right. are, yeah. are are liking the delivery and f- finding it to be convenient. So I think yeah. some of this is here to stay. And that's reflected in that article because they were saying that they're they're assuming that this will create more of a shift, permanent shift Mm -hmm. towards online alcohol sales. Yeah. Yeah. I I do think in general, when technology is moving forward, like it is that you're going to have these changes. And I think COVID has just sped that up. Obviously it's also sped up the state alcohol laws, allowing stuff like that. Because if you remember in our state before COVID happened, we couldn't, we didn't have beer me where we could buy directly from the brewery and they'll bring the beer to your door or the ability for any of these breweries to ship within Maryland to customers. And now we do. Obviously that's because of law changes in the state and that's happened in a lot of states. So yeah, I think overall it's, it's a good thing in my opinion. Uh, Maybe not so much a good thing for liquor stores long term, but we'll see. I think I I think I'd read that spirits currently through Drizzly spirits sell the most. Hmm. That's I, the biggest one. I would one. think it would be wine. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing: wine. The wine industries had the infrastructure in the United States to ship wherever for a while now. That's true. So they've been less. They've had their had their hands tied less. Um. So. Yeah, I think we just need to at least bring craft beer up to that. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, I would love to get to a point where I can just think of any brewery in the United States or Canada or wherever, and then just buy the beer online and have it directly shipped to my house. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the way it should. I mean, obviously you have to have a way to verify your, your age and that's fine, but it's 2021. We have the technology. And if people aren't doing it, then you're, it's just cause you're lazy. Right. Like, come on. Okay. Let's get there, man. Okay. Let's try you, these beers. You just want to cut this topic yeah. because you just like get we're, the beers in my, in my face hole. Get the beers in my face hole. Okay. Um, so this episode may end up being a little bit on the shorter end, but that's because that topic, no. it's more informational than anything. Yeah. You know, we offered what we have to say about it, but yeah. Um, all right. So beer A, what do you think? Beer A. What's it looking like? Looks like a hazy IPA. Does it look like that juice bra? It does. It's yellow. I want, wait, I want to hear you say that juice bra. No. I, come on. I don't think you've ever said it. I want to hear it. I'm not doing it. Do it for Kyle Norman. I'm not doing it for Kyle You Norman. wouldn't do that for Kyle Norman? Nope. Do it for Kyle Norman. I'm not doing it. Do it for Olivia Norman. I'm not doing it for anybody. You won't say that juice bra? That juice bra. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was for Olivia, actually. Thanks for Olivia. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it definitely looks like a hazy IPA. Smells like a hazy IPA? Yeah. <laughs> you weren't very excited about that, though. I don't know if I like the smell. Um, It smells too yeasty. It is quite yeasty. I think also, it, it for me, I it came off the same way, but I think it's because it's in comparison to that revolution that we just had. Because that nose was really awesome. It was like the pineapple and that tangerine and just like really awesome. This has some pine. Yeah. Which, you know, when you smell something that's very, you know, fruit and citrus driven and then you smell something that's pine driven, pine's not as pleasing as as a nose. There's a decent pine. There's also, okay, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to no, say... No, no, no. Go ahead, because you should be leading this, but there is... I'll I'll, I'll bring it up if you don't say it. I, th- I feel like there is some citrus. There is, like, some is. orange, but it's, it is mostly pine. Well, and it's like that kind of concentrated sugary orange where it's like a dehydrated yeah. orange situation, in my opinion. 
So, yeah. Uh, also, I, I do feel like it smells kind of a little syrupy. Yeah. A little syrupy, like it's maybe a little more viscous. Maybe a little higher ABV is how it smells. I can see that. Okay, I'm going, thick. I'm going in. But, yeah, I'm definitely smelling what you're smelling. In, in addition to that pininess, there's also a, um, a lot of yeast on the nose. So, yeah, you tasted it. Let me know what you got. It's relatively mild. It's definitely very yeasty. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, you d- I'm definitely, I'm getting everything that we got in the nose, in the taste. Um, but the flavors are re- are kind of muted. I think it's okay. Yeah. Um, I think in comparison, once again, in, in comparison to that Hazy Hero by Revolution, um, it's less what I want with the Hazy Beer. Um, it's thicker. And we're recording these back to back, which yeah, is yeah. why we keep referring right. to that last beer so mm-hmm. often. Right. Because we literally just drank it. It has a thick mouthfeel. It is very thick. It is which, thick. Which I don't mind. I kind of like that. It's a little chewy in, yeah. uh, in that in that way. Um, I like the way the pine is presenting in it because there is that bit of that kind of like sweet dehydrated orange. I do think I'd like the sweetness dialed back a little bit though. Oh, I don't... It's not insane. It's just like for me personally, I just want it down a little bit. Just a little bit. There is more of a bitterness than I thought there would be, though. Yeah. Which is a plus for me. You know me and bitterness. I'm down with it. Um, Once again, I don't really like hazy IPAs typically, uh, but this is okay. I, I, I mean, I'm all right with this. To quote the original co-host of the show, Kyle uh, Harris, it doesn't blow my sack back. It doesn't blow my sack back. I'll just, I'll just say that. Is that what he says? Yeah, that's yeah, that's his thing. He said it on the podcast or in early episodes a few times. So, um, I will say though, as I continue to sip it, for how thick it is and how prominent that kind of bitterness is, and the syrupiness and the pine, it's more sessionable than I would think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get in this next one. All right. So the next one, go for it. It's dark. Looks like a stout. There's not much of any head hanging out, TBH. Yeah. (laughs) Rebecca just took a sniff real quick and her head like snapped back. Is that good or bad? Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. That's a good thing. This nose, there's one particular smell that I get in this that's so specific I want to see if you say it, and I've never smelled this very specific smell in a beer before, and I love it. It smells like caramel coffee. Oh, okay. I wasn't thinking that, but I could could definitely see that. And it smells like tiramisu. Yes, I can also see that. So the one really strong note I get immediately in this is a slightly burnt marshmallow. I was just going to say marshmallow. It is... I've never smelled a slightly burnt marshmallow. It legitimately sa- smells like the marshmallow that you get from a s'mores that you just did on the, yeah. on the grill, like over a fire or on the grill. That's how I did it as a kid. My my dad would like grill burgers or chicken or ribs or something, and then he'd leave the grill on while we ate dinner, and so that it would you know be a low level fire in there, and then we'd go out and you know roast oh, marshmallows on it. Um, and that's what the smell, it smells like yeah. those marshmallows. It's so good. It's really good. That's an amazing smell. And it also makes me think a little bit of graham cracker as well. Lots of chocolate, lots of vanilla to it. Coffee. Yes. It smells amazing. It smells like it could be a bit too sweet though. And I hope it's not. I don't think it's too sweet. It's definitely sweet. Um, I can kind of perceive the alcohol, Ugh. but it's really good. <sighs> That's a dessert. Yeah, it's definitely a dessert. That's a dessert. It's definitely like, a sipper dessert beer. Yeah. This is the beer you have instead of having a dessert. Like, you don't have it with dessert. You have it as your dessert after dinner or lunch or breakfast? Probably sure. not. <laughs> so what are you tasting out of it? I'm definitely getting more of the caramel. I'm not getting as much as... I was getting more coffee in the nose, but not mm-hmm. as much in the taste. Yeah, I um, agree. Definitely chocolate, definitely caramel, definitely, I think, some of it, like, vanilla marshmallow-y. Yeah. And do you feel like, like, in the smell, like, that burnt character on that yeah. vanilla marshmallow, you're getting that in the flavor? I am. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Mm. 
Yeah, definitely very caramel forward. Yeah, it is. It, it, yeah, I agree. There's a really nice creaminess to it mm-hmm. as well. And it's it's on the thicker end, but it's not insanely thick. You know what I mean? Like, it's not crazy thick, but it's got, you know, it's it's a little thicker. Are you perceiving the boost? I am. A little. A little. Um, I don't think it's high ABV. I just think I'm just perceiving the booze. I just can't get over how much I love, I love that burnt marshmallow. Yeah. Like, that is not just that I smell it, but I, I legitimately taste it at a very significant level. That's just, like, that's my favorite thing about this beer. Mm-hmm. Like, that blows my mind. And like I said, I've never smelled that or tasted that in a beer ever in my life. So this Pretty, is... Pretty... It's a very specific... I'm real flavor. happy. Real happy I bought this beer. Yeah. This is... Man. Unfortunately, this is a beer I only got one uh, one can of. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> Unfortunately. One I know can. after having this, you were like, I wish that was the one you accidentally got two four yeah. packs of. Yeah. I mean, it's not to say we can't order it again at some we point. Can. We probably could if it's in stock. But, okay, so numbers. These are going to be hard to rank. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a few more sips to. I... After having B, going back to A, I'm liking it even more, yeah. actually. I think maybe it's in the contrast of, like, the kind of desserty sweetness versus more of, like, a hoppiness with more bitterness to it. Like I said, it's solid. I'm, 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 I'm okay. down. I'm down. Um, okay. Okay. Did you want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. So beer A, I'm going to give a four. Okay. And beer B, I'm going to give a six. Okay. I am with you on A. I'm definitely giving it a four. B. I think a six is right. I agree with you on that one, too. Really? Yeah, I agree. And that's your brutal battle scoring? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. It okay. is. I mean, it's good stuff. Okay, so you want to be the one to reveal them again? Sure. All right, so we go with A first, because that is the loser of the episode with an overall four, which is still quite good for the yeah. podcast. In a 16-ounce can is... It has to be a hazy IPA. Le juice? Le juice, bruh. Le juice. It's a New England style IPA, juicy hazy IPA, six percent by Alarmist Brewing. Uh, are they also out of Chicago? I think they are. Chicago. Yep. Now Matt Harvey, I bought this and then told him I bought it, and then he was like, "Oh, I know the guy who is like owner head brewer." Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, that's a pretty good beer." I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I chose well." Um, and they also, they have, um, you mer- uh, it won a medal apparently, yeah. beer festival medal. Can't fully read what that is. Yeah. So I was going to read it too, but I was like, I can't read it. Oh, great American beer festival. It got a medal. I can't tell which medal it is though. Let me use, cause where I am, it's a little bit on the, um, darker side of the table. It looks like bronze metal yeah looks like they got a bronze okay cool which is no small feat honestly yeah i dig it i dig it for sure hazy Did you bro. see what it says on the top Ju- juicy bro and <laughs> hazy bro juicy and it bro. also says overrated that's funny <laughs> drink fresh yeah although i will i will point out it says drink fresh but they don't date code Mm. Uh, alarmist folks, you might want a date code if you're going to tell people to drink fresh. Yeah. Just saying. Can't drink fresh and we don't know what the date is. Although, in Chicago, the beer market's a little different. Yeah. As true. in, I think I think people consume beer a lot more or fresher than where we are. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm assuming you're extremely interested in knowing what yeah. your beer is. So, since you didn't know Alarmist... We've had beer from the second one before, from beer, okay. the brewery of Beer B. I don't know what, I don't, I have no idea. Winner of the episode with an overall of six in a 16-ounce can. Hi, 
works. Yes. 10.5%. You would not think it. Pothole City, which is an imperial stout with vanilla, cacao nibs, lactose, and natu- national natural marshmallow and almond flavor. I'm we seeing the almond now. Definitely got the marshmallow. I'm seeing the almond now. Now that that's jogged my memory that almond is in there. I see it. Um, this beer's very tasty. Yeah, it is tasty. Like, very tasty. They were selling them as singles, by the way. Uh, not as four packs. So, hmm. it you know, you would assume with what it is and the ingredients it is on the pricier end which is probably why they're selling it as singles. But I've had nothing but great experiences with Pipeworks. In fact, when I initially was putting my order together for the Beer Temple online, this is what I do. I go through and I put everything in the cart that I want, which usually ends up being an insane amount. Then I look at the cart and I look at the price and then I start cutting things out. And I had a lot of Pipeworks. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of Pipeworks in there. Um, but I cut it down to just one. It was really hard because the thing is I really wanted to get some Lizard King, which is their mosaic pale ale, Mm. which is unbelievable. Uh, but I, you know, I didn't want to spend too much and I just wanted to make sure I was getting beers from a bunch of different breweries to use for the podcast. So, um, like I've said before, we can order again. Yes. And the next time we order, I'm getting some Lizard King. Okay. (laughs) Because they usually have it in stock. So that's... That beer's amazing. And Ky- I know Kyle Norman right now is just like, yeah, it is. It's, yes, he knows. He knows. So, yeah. So, good episode? Yeah. So, overall, would, do you like this episode more beers-wise? You'd probably put the Kolsch and this yeah. port, uh, Imperial Stout together. I could like them both. I think I like them both equally for you know, yeah. different reasons. Yeah. Yeah? Well, I think you, oh, you almost rated them the same. I think you gave the Kolsch one higher yeah, you than gave that one a seven. Yeah. I rated them the same. I put them on the same oh, level. Okay. So, yeah. But, okay. Uh, good times. Um, yeah. And we have one more episode of the Mystery Beers with the Chicago purchased beers coming up. And um, this one will be interesting as well. So, okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for checking this out. And until next time. Keep it brutal. I feel so-